Greetings, guys. Big day uh, at FSU. Certainly, uh, there's a lot going on at FSU Junior Day. Uh, certainly kicked off things today. I uh, had over 60 kids there. Uh, basically, the overview, guys, I mean, I've told you this before. It was kind of similar to what they've done the last two weekends, the setup. Um, the greet, meet and greet was kind of at the IPF buffet, stuff like that. And kids wanted to eat, and they had a little few games that the guys could play playing the FSU highlights over big screen TVs all the way in there. So it was a lot of fun and just really just being around each other and the coaches being around, you know, different recruits. And then after that, once they did that, they went into more athletic center, got into detail as far as breaking down film with coaches, just meeting coach Norvell, spending one-on-one -on -one time with coaches, not just film study, but just really personally get to know them and just, um, just really connect with them uh, with a lot of the coaches. So, Really busy day. Um, I'll, I'll just keep to the main highlights, guys. Um, two receivers that I'll start with the receiver position because two guys that really stood out to me were Lewayne McCoy, who's out of Miami Central, and then B.J. Gibson out of Georgia. Um, I think FSU has a really good shot at both of those guys. I would say probably lean towards FSU leading for McCoy, and then I think FSU is right there. Uh, if not, the team that's the most consistent I hear – around B.J. Gibson. B.J. originally was committed to Tennessee for baseball. Uh, he obviously got to see a little bit of FSU with baseball and stuff like that. So he certainly, uh, he's been over to FSU more more than any school. So that's why I tend to lead momentum with FSU for both of those guys. But it's going to be really interesting because you're, you're still talking about, you know, they're going to take two more receivers, maybe three. I've, I've heard as many as five. So uh, they could take as many as five. So right now they are a two committed. You got Josh Trader still out there, a five-star wide receiver from Chaminade. You also have Chance Robinson, who they're very high on from St. Thomas Aquinas. So you got these two guys. So they're certainly giving themselves a lot of options. I think they're in pretty decent position with both of these guys that are that are coveted. So it's going to be interesting to see how that worked out. Probably the highest rated recruit that was there is Alvin Henderson. He's out of uh, Alabama. Um, a guy that really, really, really was impressed with FSU today. Um, couldn't stop raving about Coach Norvell. The way he approached him was different, where it was more specific about what they do specifically with their running backs. Uh, I think it was really detailed. I cover a lot of that in my recruiting rap. If you go in there and read, you can see just the different aspects of what FSU showed. Uh, for those that don't really know that background, you know, you know, Mike Norvell has, has got uh, so many guys in the NFL from even from Memphis. I mean, you have Daryl Henderson, Tony Pollard with my Cowboys, uh, certainly, uh, you know, Antonio Gibson at Washington. So there's a lot of backs and certainly a lot of illustration. I think he showed to Alvin Henderson today about what FSU does with backs. And it really caught his attention. Uh, certainly said FSU is very high. I still think it's FSU all around bad, but I think FSU is is certainly a team that has a unique approach that uh, no other team has done, and even Alvin admitted to that today. So that's certainly a, a positive development with FSU there. Then we get to the trenches. A lot of guys in there. Peyton Joseph, 2025 four-star um, uh, offensive lineman. He came out straight and said, look, FSU is number one for me. I don't have a list, but he's like, if I had one, it would be FSU number one. So certainly that's good news. Obviously, the news that everyone was waiting on to see if Joseph Onada, uh, a legacy recruit, a double legacy recruit, actually, was going to get an offer. I was pretty intrigued by the way FSU did that, where they wanted to build a relationship first. They didn't technically offer him a visit, but he was supposed to talk to Norvell later tonight or Atkins and Atkins as well. I think FSU is kind of taking their, what they usually do, which is we want to build the relationship and the bond. And then after that, uh, we want to make sure that it didn't just, oh, you're just a number and we're just offering you. It's like, we want to offer you because we feel like uh, you're the guy. And two, Mike Norrell said something interesting. It's kind of his honest approach. He says, I want you to work for it. So um, it's kind of like uh, Norrell's like, I don't care what you're, you know, your your dad played here, your uncle played here. It's like it's it was an honest approach, and it really I could tell Joseph was it resonated with Joseph. Uh, certainly, you still have to see 
where it goes from here and that they do offer him. But I, I, I like that approach. I like the honest approach, and it was, it was pretty cool. Now, one guy did get an offer, offensive tackle, Raynor Andrews. He's a new guy that you guys haven't heard a lot about, but he's a guy that FSU has been tracking since last year uh, out of Miami Jackson, six foot five. Uh, certainly uh, he looks the part with everything, over 300 pounds. Uh, it said FSU's recruiting him at the tackle position. There's no doubt FSU likes him. FSU offered him. I was there at FSU probably when they got there. When I was there, they were maybe there five minutes. I got a call from one of his coaches and said, FSU's already offered. It was like, so they want, they, they've they been thinking about this over a while. So this wasn't like a uh, just up to the minute thing. Uh, he just jumped out of him. I think they've been studying Raynor for a while. Um, he also has several schools in the mix for him that, you know, like Colorado, USF, um, I think Kentucky is also involved that that is involved in liking him. And I think he's a guy that's going to blow up this spring. So definitely a name to watch. Um, I certainly think that FSU seems to be on his mind. He liked the approach of FSU throughout the weekend where they were they they tre- they told him what was going to be good, what was going to be bad. He's close friends with Daughtry Richardson, who's already on the team. So that was obviously, obviously the comfort was really high. So didn't name a leader, but you kind of sense that FSU kind of looks good there. Another offer was to Nasir Johnson. That's another one you guys haven't heard a lot about. FSU's notorious for these at these junior days because they, one, they're very intrigued by these prospects, and two, they're probably going to work them out later. So um, I think in Nasir, what, what caught their attention is, is just um, you know, the way he gets off the ball, his hands, and it really, yeah, there's some technique stuff they think they want to clean up, but I think that was one of the main reasons that FSU jumped on board there. Then another top player that was there is Walter Matthews, tight end, uh, four-star, really highly regarded uh, nationally everywhere. I, I would say probably, you know, Florida and Ohio State were probably the teams that I'd heard the most in that recruitment. Maybe some others didn't really hear Florida State as much until today when I talked to Walter, and he's like, uh, my interest really changed as far as, uh, you know, how much I'd like FSU. So they certainly made a play and a move for Walter. Still work to do. He's going to come back. He wants to bring his dad this time on the visit. So certainly uh, Coach Thompson and, and Norvell did a did a heck of a job, uh, you know, making an impression on just the way they do things, their tight end room, and just the way their tight ends are utilized. So I think that really caught Walter's attention. And, and that's really uh, some of the main ones. I mean, there's a few more guys left on, you know, the recruiting wrap that I covered. But those are some of the main things as far as, uh, you know, what happened at FSU today. It's not over. I'll be back at FSU again tomorrow. Um, we have a few more visitors. Four-star safety Ricardo Jones is going to be there. As well as, this is one kind of surprised me, Nye Carr out of Colquitt County. Four-star receiver that's committed to uh, Georgia. So both of those guys are expected to be there. I don't know if there's going to be more guys, but uh, just something to keep an eye on. I'll be back out there. We'll wrap this thing up uh, tomorrow because after that, we hit a dead period uh, after Sunday night at midnight. So things are going to close down, but uh, we're going to finish it strong. And uh, that's kind of where things stand. Stay tuned to War Chant. I'll probably have a few more things uh, on Sunday. And uh, once again, this is WarChant.com.